Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. Um, today I'm going to teach you how to smoke meat on a kettle grill using something called the snake method. And um, I'll be cooking a pork butt. I'm going to make some pulled pork today. But this method would work for any type of meat, ribs, brisket, chicken, um, and pork, anything that you want to smoke. Uh, this is a really neat method and I'll go ahead and show you how we set it up. All right, I'll go ahead and show you the setup that I'm using. I've got just a standard uh, Weber 22 and a half inch kettle. Um, today I'll be using some stubs, all natural uh, charcoal briquettes, and I'm gonna use apple wood. I was looking for some pecan last night and I couldn't find anywhere, couldn't find any anywhere that I went. So I've never smoked a pork butt using apple wood. So I always like to try something different. So that's what I'll be doing today. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stump out some charcoal on the grill. That's probably enough to get started with. I don't know exactly how much it'll take, but we'll just see as we go. All right, I've gathered all my charcoal over here out of the way. I'm gonna start right here, and what we're gonna do is go all the way around the grill, or actually we'll probably go about halfway around the grill, and I'm gonna line these up in rows of two. And what's gonna happen is once we get the first layer down, I'll come back and I'll put another layer on top, just like this. All right, as you can see here, I've lined these up about halfway around the grill. Um, I think this will get us through a few hours. Now the pork butt that I'm smoking today, it's just a little bit over five pounds. I think it's actually five and a quarter pounds. So I'm anticipating that to take about five or six hours. Um, if we want to light one end of the charcoal, what we're gonna do here in just a couple minutes is we'll take about 10 of these other briquettes and we'll put them in the chimney and get them started. And then we'll layer wood um, on the top of this and space it out however we want it. And uh, you'll light the charcoal on this side and it will gradually burn all the way around. Now, when it gets closer um, to the end, if I see that I'm gonna need a few more hours, I can, I've got a grate that uh, has hinges on the side of it and I can just raise one of those up and I can add a few more briquettes, however, more, however many that I think that it'll take. All right, now it's time to, to actually light my other briquettes. So if you notice, I've got my chimney turned upside down. I'll show you just a little quick trick that I've learned. Uh, if you're gonna do just a few, I like turning it upside down. I'm gonna put my lighter cube right here. And I'm just gonna put about 10 in here. Well, there's 11. That's how many I had poured out. So we'll just go with 11, that's close enough. I'll go ahead and light this now. And I'll see you back in just a few minutes after this uh, charcoal is ready. All right, while my grill's getting ready, I'm gonna go ahead and get this pork butt ready to put on there. Um, very simple. All I'm doing today is I'm gonna use a little uh, mustard for the binder. And um, I've got this rub that I made. I really like this on pork, using on chicken sometimes. I'll put the uh, ingredients and the recipe to it in the notes of the video. I just put it in a shaker. And um, I'll go ahead and coat the pork butt with this mustard. Just want to rub it down really good. Mustard really won't impart a whole lot of flavor. Um, it's just going to act like I said as a binder so that we can keep our rub on there good. We want a good bark um, towards the end of our cook on the outside. All right, just apply this very liberally. All right, 
right, we'll let that set for just a little while. And once our uh, charcoal's done, we'll bring our grill up to temperature and we'll be ready to put that on there. All right, now that we've got our charcoal lit, I'm gonna take a pair of long handled tongues so that it don't have to get burned. And I'm gonna place this charcoal right at the beginning of the snake that we made with the rest of it. And the plan is for this charcoal as it gradually burns out, it will continue to ignite the rest of it and it'll make its way, the flame or the fire rather, will make its way slowly around to the end little at a time, that way we don't have too much heat at one time. That one wants to keep rolling away. All right, like I told you earlier also, I'm using some apple wood. And this is the first time that I've smoked a pork butt using apple wood, but um, apple is very mild and uh, sort of sweet. I love the way that it smells, so I think it'll turn out really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my first little chunk of wood right here at the beginning. And then I'm gonna lay another one about the mid section. I think I'll keep this one off for now and I can always add some. Uh, my plan is to apply smoke to the meat until it reaches an eternal temperature of about 160 degrees or so and at that point I'll probably wrap it and, and just let it cook with uh, just some good clean uh, heat from the charcoal from that point on. So, but we'll see where it goes and like I said I can also, I can always add more wood uh, in here anywhere that I need to or take it off when I get to the point that I want to stop putting smoke on it for that matter. So. I've got my bottom vent closed off about halfway right now, and that's where I'm gonna start the top one as well, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and place my water pan in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in it. I'll go ahead and put my cooking grate on here. Now, like I said earlier, I've got one that's got the hinges on the side, so, if I get to the point to where I'm at the end of the charcoal and I think I need to add some more, I need to cook for a little longer, I can uh, access this and put a little more charcoal in there and may have to move things around just a little bit, but we can do that if needed. But I think this will be enough. I'll go ahead and put the lid on now and let it come up to temperature. Um, shooting for a temperature today of about 225 to 250 degrees. And I'll try to maintain that during the entire cook. So I'll give it a few minutes and then we'll come back. All right, I've went ahead now and placed the pork butt on the cooking grate. And if you'll notice, I put it on the side opposite of the coal so that we can cook it indirectly. Um, I'll put the lid on it with the vent over top of the meat so that the heat and the smoke will have to travel up over the meat and then out. And as for the first few hours, the only thing I'll be doing to this is just checking on it uh, pretty often and maintaining temperature. Like I said, around 225 to 250, as close as I can get to that. So. I'll probably check back in with you after about three hours. So I'll see you at the three hour mark. All right guys, I told you I would be back in about three hours. It's actually been about three and a half. I'll go ahead and show you what it's looking like. Um, for the last three and a half hours, really all I've done is just maintain temperature. Um, I'll show you how much of the uh, coals we've used. It's burned a little over halfway now. And I actually put a little handful in there. I may have to add a few more. Um, this might finish us up, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I was looking for a temperature of around 160 degrees. It's been a little slower coming up than what I would have hoped. Just a few degrees shy of that right now. All right, so I went ahead and put the lid back on there and I'm gonna give it just a few more minutes so it come up just uh, three or four more degrees and then we'll take it off and wrap it and put it back on there to finish out. All right, at this point I've took it off of the uh, grill and I made some, uh, I mixed up one part water, one part apple cider vinegar and two parts apple juice. What I wanna do is just spray this down a little bit 
you can see it's got a nice bark on it. I don't know if you can see this real good or not. The shade's come over just a little bit where I am. So I'm gonna just spray it down just a little bit. Put a little moisture in here and then we'll wrap it up. And this, uh, this solution and the juices that will come out of this, uh, the, the meat will kind of braise in it and it'll help, help it maybe be a little more tender, hopefully or juicy. And then also wrapping it may help the uh, cooking process speed up just a little bit. I'm not gonna put too much on there. I don't wanna really mess up my bark too much. You wanna wrap it up pretty tight. Notice I'm using two pieces of, uh, two sheets of aluminum foil. Wrap it twice. Then I'll just put this back on there for a couple more hours or so and hopefully we'll get up to about 195 degrees and we'll pull this off and let it rest and pull it apart.